Hickok 45. You reckon a cowboy was ever shot by one of these back in the 1800s? It's gonna happen today. Oh yeah, I kind of doubt it really, you know? I don't think a cowboy, a real cowboy, could have tolerated being killed by such an ugly gun. <laughs> Even a propane tank. Yeah, it's the Chiapa Rhino here, the 40DS, 4-inch barrel. Believe it or not, have you ever seen a firearm this ugly? I mean, I ask you, really, have you ever seen, a, yeah, a firearm, not just a handgun, any gun that ugly? And I know I've offended some of you, because many of you don't really think it's that ugly, okay? But you'll have to humor me, because, you know, I'm an old guy and I have had revolvers my entire life and none of them look like this creature. They look more like that one, <laughs> the Model 19 Smith & Wesson. Just for contrast, look at that. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a gun bashing video, okay? <laughs> nah, it's not really gonna be a gun bashing video. Uh, you guys have been requesting that I get my hands on one of these for a few years. And I think the first few requests I got, I thought you were kidding. I really did. Because uh, by that time, you knew uh, some of the beautiful revolvers that I owned and dearly loved. The old Colt single actions and Smith & Wesson double actions, uh, vintage Smiths and everything. And so I, I just thought you were joking, really. Like, it, because someone would say, hey, God, you need to, you need to review the Chiapa Rhino. You need to get one of those. Yeah, really, don't I? Aren't they gorgeous? Uh... But over the years, I have realized people are serious about it. I mean, you have been very serious. And it's been a surprise to me. It, you know, we all learn, we're never too old to learn, uh, especially when you've got so much gap up there, you know, where you can't go the other way. You just, you can you know, get more knowledge maybe, but you can't lose a lot because there's not a lot up there, right? I, but really, I have learned something that this firearm is not really repulsive to everybody as it was to me when I first saw them and the second time I saw them and the third time and almost every time I see them they're just a little bit repulsive I'll have to say though since uh, we've had it here at the compound and shooting it uh, looking it over cleaning it and and the messing with it my my impression has changed some okay I'm uh, I've calmed down it's still ugly but it, it does function and you know uh, as an old Glock guy you know ugly is as ugly does if you got something that functions well okay I can I can live with it so we're gonna look at it and I'll let you know what I think of it before I told you a little bit about that heaven <laughs> but I'm gonna be objective and uh, you know I mean there's no reason not to be we appreciate the ammo from federal and this is an actual uh, firearm sent by buds so I don't know why they'd send such an ugly gun to me. No, we requested it, and uh, I'm glad to have it. We're going to enjoy, uh, you know, shoot, shooting it some more. I've been shooting it quite a bit, and and uh, we're going to shoot it for you. Let you know how it works if you don't already know that. Okay, so uh, Chiapa Rhino. Does it look a little bit like a rhinoceros to you? I think it does, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> I, I guess it's pretty easy to see why it's named that. Uh, I'll shoot her some more here, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use these speed loaders a little bit. Uh, that's kind of unusual. I don't know if I'm aware of any other 357 Magnums that actually take a speed loader, but you get three of those with the, the firearm. And so, you know, I used one out there. I guess I knocked it out on the ground there. We'll find it. I'll probably step on it and ruin it. But, uh, or did I stick it in my pocket? Speed loaders, or speed loaders, moon clips like this are very fragile. They're very easy to, to bend and warp out and they don't work too well. So be careful with those if you have them. All right, you got your cylinder here the, with the flat sides to it. And uh, that's one of the advantages of the revolver. It keeps it a little more slim. You know, if you've got the carry, oh, this could be a carry size model, I guess, or the two, two and a half inch, whatever it is. Uh, and it's really a carry, kind of a snub gun. You've got a, a flatter firearm there in 357 than you might have with the Smith. You know, with the, the Smith here, you got the, you don't have a flat cylinder, of course, okay? Actually, I haven't measured them, but it may not be all that different, but you do have a flat one. And uh, 
Negatives, let me go ahead and so, uh, go through some more of the negatives. I don't like that latch, the, the opening of the cylinder is kind of weird. Uh, part of it is the traditionalist in me, I guess, but uh, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. Neither John nor I like that too much. Uh, it seems okay, I guess it's pretty positive and works, but uh, not crazy about that. Uh, now, I've been hammering it. Let me tell you some things that I do like about it. Uh, the fact that it's going away. Just kidding, just kidding. No, I do like the grip. If you've ever held one of these, even if right now you're about to regurgitate, you people in Kentucky, that means throw up. If you're about to throw up just from seeing it, uh, even in my hand, <laughs> uh, let me tell you, uh, you, you might want to grab one sometime. It, it feels great in the hand. It, it fits really well. And the double action on it is not bad. Okay, I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's a little stiff, but it's not bad at all. Even the single action, now it's got a stiff hammer. The single action is not great, not like a Smith, but it's not all that bad either. This is a kind of revolver that you pick up. I mean, me, again, my bias is a little bit like the, the Russian, you know, the Nagant revolver, which is kind of a contraption in a way. You pick it up and it takes three men and a boy to pull the trigger. You know, you expect it to, to be like that. But it's really not. It's it's a lot smoother, and it's much better built than you would expect. Okay, it just is <laughs> surprisingly. And if you search around the forums and the web, uh, you really do see mostly positive uh, things about these these characters. Okay, I, I mean it's a gun you want to hate. It's a gun I wanted to hate, and I really have hated the looks of it. But uh, once you get it in your hand. Uh, there is an element of uh, pleasant surprise. The front sights, you've got your fiber optic, you've got an adjustable rear sight, and you get a pretty good sight picture on, on this particular model. I think some of the much smaller ones, they have a lot of different configurations, have maybe no rear sight like that. The sight's actually even on the hammer, a groove cut into the hammer. Uh, this one I requested a four inch, I wanted just kind of a mid-size piece. They're all ugly, the short ones are even uglier I think. Uh, so the hammer's kind of stiff, but uh, you know the sights and I have shot it several times. The sights are pretty much right on, the best I can tell. And you know it shoots. It's not hung up on us. John shot it. I fired it. The the claim to fame is you know it's where the barrel is. It's down here along the bottom of that. If you didn't know that, if you wondered about these strange looking animals, and so it fires from the bottom of the cylinder so the round in the bottom of the cylinder is the one that's being fired so you got a hammer down here this is really just a hammer to cock the hammer it's not the the real hammer and so you're firing down here so you've got a straight line on the uh the bore axis so it's coming straight back into your hand and i don't know of any firearm that does that as well and so all the recoil comes straight back now the thing you read about these all the time is they have no recoil low recoil no recoil all that well yeah, what they really mean is you don't get the muzzle flip, okay? You don't, you can't shoot physics. If you fire a hot 357 or a weak 357 or a weak 38, it has a certain impulse. It's going somewhere. It's just that with this gun, it's coming straight back up your arm. And, and uh, you really feel like you can just hold that thing right on, stiff. Let's try it again, see if it'll shoot. <laughs> Oh, and the, the most important thing I didn't share with you yet, I, I don't want to forget that, because a lot of people are not aware that John Browning actually designed this thing, and he put all the stats, all the, the design uh, drawings in an envelope, and he sent them to Smith & Wesson with a sign not to be opened until 2009. And voila, they, I think they must have opened it, and uh, then they just got rid of it and threw it somewhere, and, and I guess Kiapa found it, so you believe that? Yeah, I know. Get your act to the comedy club, not at the compound, right? Let's shoot uh, some hot rounds, 357, okay? 158 grain, well, I say hot, uh, 357 is hot enough. Doesn't have to be plus P or plus P plus or plus plus P P plus plus plus, does it? 357 is a healthy little, little round. So I'll put one of these here. Well, that's 357, yeah. Okay. Now these are going to be a little warmer, and uh, before we forget, let's uh, again, as we do this, Kentucky is still alive, and somebody told me I pick on Kentucky a little bit, so again, a little bit of a tribute to Kentucky with our remaining blue two liters. 
Yeah. Yeah, let's do that for Kentucky. Okay, that was double action on, uh, well, all of that. Let's do uh, Cowboy again. So, it's, it's not a bad pull. It's really not too bad. It's, uh, you know, it's, it does come back at you. And, and that's the thing, you can feel it right there. So, while it's true, it does not rise as much as, say, that gun would with the same ammo. As far as the muzzle flip, you're still getting the same uh, energy back at you and uh, into your hand you can feel in fact in some ways it hurts a little more I would rather now Smith though is kind of famous these double action revolvers for for them sort of coming back into your hand as well but this one with your your barrel let's see and then we got new shooters we got people who aren't familiar with guns so again let's not assume too much here that uh, you really see your barrels up here at the top of the cylinder generally okay so so the round is recoiling against the top of the recoil shield up here you know the barrel everything in line there so you recoil that round is pushing against up here about at the top of the hammer there so when you fire it you know it's you know it comes up a little bit right whereas the difference with this one as I showed you and the barrels down here so it's coming straight back into your hand the bore axis even is even actually below the top of your hand so it's really coming straight back, okay? If you had a 44 Magnum, do they make a 44 Magnum this thing? I, I'm, I'm thinking they may not, maybe they do. Uh, if you put a really hot 44 Magnum in a light handgun like this and fired it, it, it would hurt. Uh, I'd really rather it, it come up some, tell you the truth, but, but it doesn't hurt We have 357. Most of us can handle a 357 without too much trouble. So, so that's mainly why I had that out here. And then two, if some of you just get a little nauseous after looking at it, uh, you know, you can just kind of take a look at that when it's on uh, camera <laughs> and feel a little bit better. Okay, so these are 38s here, hollow point, jacketed hollow points. Let's put a couple on the target, what the heck. I've been trying these speed loaders, they work okay. I'll drop one in the ground and put it in my pocket and see if that... All right, let's take a... The sights seem to be on pretty well. I'll actually cock it and do a little bit of single action. Now, I, don't, I haven't really tried any pinpoint accuracy. I've tried two liter accuracy. I'll just hold in the middle, kind of try to and see where they go. Wherever they go is where they go. <laughs> single action. It is a stiff hammer. So I can't really see where they're going, so I'm just gonna hold in the middle Try to hold in the middle. That one got away. I think I hit one. <laughs> Didn't mean to fire that. It's got a fairly light trigger. It's not bad. Not bad. I like a light trigger. It surprised me a little bit. What else about this stupid thing? Okay. So it's not. It's lighter than, a, a, say, a, a traditional revolver because. You know, all of this sight up here and all this construction up here, it doesn't have to be, you know, heavy machine steel, does it? Because your barrel's down here and you see it's open so it's safe. But you've got a sleeve there and everything. So you can, they, they have been able to make it out of, a lot of it out of alloy and then steel where it needs to be steel. It's like your uh, recoil shield and all that, steel, your barrel, your cylinder, and then you have alloy. Uh, in other places so it's it's not very heavy I mean this is the kind of thing it could be really heavy when you look at it look at all that that construction there and uh, it seems solidly built okay trying to be nice to it the hammer is really stiff you notice when it's cocked the little red plunger comes up there to let you know okay and when you fire it is down so when you cock it notice the hammer it's really just to cock the mechanism down here because the firing pin and the hammer are, are right down there. So, you know, that just falls back forward. So, uh, you look at the back of it, is it cocked? Yeah, you got your red plunger to tell you it's cocked, okay? And one thing I discovered, in fact, before we started here, uh, I put three rounds in it, and I was just gonna take three shots at something before we even started again, and it went click. I thought, like, what? Because I knew the cylinder turned clockwise. And so I, so I did, put three rounds in there, and click, uh-oh, 
delayed reaction. What's going on? We found our first problem with the gun. Well, the only problem was up here. I'd forgotten. Uh, <laughs> I aligned it so the next round would come up here under the hammer. No, dummy, that's not where they need to do it. You need to align them so the next round, when you turn the cylinder, is going to be down here on the lower part, right? Okay. I never claimed to be smart. Uh, but, you know, that's where the barrel is. That's where all the action is down there. Let's try something really kind of light, like these little 38s. Uh, these are, these are, uh, these are, as I usually point out, these are wonderful little rounds like this. Just plain light uh, target 38 special. For somebody learning to shoot. And oh man, if you're teaching somebody to shoot on one of these, I guess that's okay. It works. <laughs> Let's try one on the. Ah, there's a two-liter left. Um, <laughs> oh, and there's a pot. Yeah. Very nice. Tell you what, uh, it hits where you're aiming. It really does. It's uh, It hits where the sights are when you pull the trigger. And uh, John and I were noticing there's something about it too. And I'm trying to come up with some positives. <laughs> that when you pull the trigger double action it it kind of wants to stay on target it doesn't want to pull low left and you know when you pull fast it, it just the contour the geometry of the grip and everything so somebody did their research and uh it, it feels pretty good let's uh oh you know we haven't shot across the hill yet have we uh, if it's not gong worthy it's, it's totally useless so uh we'll be throwing it in a ditch if we can't hit the gong with it uh, revolvers are fun even though I have the speed loaders Oop, there's another one loaded I forgot about that I don't use them uh, you know that often you know just shooting around I enjoy taking my time all right I'll go ahead and cock it see if it's gong worthy ah the sweet sound better put another one on it make sure oh, yeah. It might even be red plate worthy. Let's try that left red plate. I'm not sure where to hold, but we'll try it. That was probably low. Might have been high, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure where it's going. Let's try a pig there on the left. I can see my misses better on the pig. Oh, yeah. I'm a little high. I think that was it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. When you miss the some of those red plates, it goes into uh, just that tire. And then tires don't stir up much dust or, you know, show where the bullet's hitting, actually. Whereas when you shoot at the one of those animals, you can sometimes see where it's missed. If you miss, right? Some of you never miss, but I do. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. If, you, if you're learning to shoot or you're, uh, you're trying to see where a, a firearm hits, that's one of the first things I do. I bring it out here. I can just I can shoot one of those animals even, even, even though they're far away. If I feel like I got a really pretty nice trigger break and everything, uh, I might still miss it, but it shouldn't be like two feet away or anything. That tells me something about the sights. So, so it seemed like it was going high. Let me try that pig again. I'll, I'll hold down on his toes. like that's where it went. There we go. Feels pretty good. Okay, who's next? Mr. Cowboy over here. <laughs> We've got two cowboys you notice now. Yeah. Lots of desperados out there. Okay. Anything I have forgotten that I know about it. Um, they're not cheap okay and that's one of the things that's been perplexing to me as i have seen them over the last whatever few years i thought well you know that uh that is a really ugly gun who would want that thing uh maybe it's really cheap maybe it's a 150 fifty dollar gun and uh but no it's whatever 800 hundred dollar gun or not they're, they're not cheap okay and the fact remains they're they're apparently really well made. 
they're accurate from all accounts and I've read several reviews on them people find them accurate they find them well made uh, reliable you know there's always the exception but uh, generally speaking the the ugly things just work and if it's not ugly to you uh, you might want to consider let's put some hot stuff in here I think I have yeah more of the speed loader there 357 Magnum all right oh we have some items here that have not been addressed look at that poor little bird <laughs> sorry birdie Woo. I bet this will knock a limb around on that uh, tree <laughs> if you hit it oh man <laughs> I think I didn't have one of my ears in tight. And I'll tell you what, a 357 Magnum, if you have never fired it, uh, it it's not a wimp round. Uh, you know, we tend to think bigger numbers, you know, like 44, 45, those are the big, powerful babies. 357 Magnum, it's hot. It's got some velocity, it's got some punch. I mean, you can feel it on your hand. And uh, But that's the beauty of a 357 uh, revolver. You can shoot the lighter loads in it or the hot loads. And uh, so, anyway, uh, a lot of you have been wanting to know what I think about these crazy things. That's kind of it. That's the best I can tell you. I'm sorry, it's never going to be pretty to me. It's just not. It's not a design I've grown up with. I'm trying to, to you know, look at it objectively. Uh, but I have to say, it is, uh, it is a good shooter, and it's kind of fun to shoot. I think one of the real appeals of this gun is when you shoot it, and the feel uh, where it does is come straight back. It's almost like something's holding down the muzzle. It, it's, it's a very interesting feeling. Uh, if you're shooting light loads, it's just strange. It's strange, but it's a positive feeling. It's, it's, it's pretty uh, unique. Uh, it does make it quicker and easier to, to reacquire your sight picture. Okay, if you, if you like to shoot fast, you wanna shoot one in competition or something, you know, you, your gun's not gonna move a lot. Now you're gonna catch it in your arm, but you know that that sight is not going to be bouncing up and down much on you so anyway if you can get past the looks it's uh it seems like a good little revolver so anyway it's been fun trying it out life is good <laughs>